This is my computer controlled monorail layout. This project tested me in so many ways. I wanted to use the Control App software from the early 90s to control everything. It has a nice graphical interface where I can design my own control panel. Then I just hook it to the monorail layout in Presto, computer controlled layout. Easy, right? Eh, not quite. Let's start at the beginning. I need track. Lots of track. LEGO only released its monorail sets from 1987 to 1994, and like many others, it was priced well out of my reach in my childhood. 30 years later, it can still be very pricey to acquire. I had slowly been buying used lots of track on eBay and other sites over the years, but I had the same problem I always have with any track. Not enough straight pieces. After amassing a sizable collection, including four switch tracks and eight direction switches, I still only had four pieces of straight track. While some third-party 3D printing suppliers have come and gone, I didn't know of any that were currently operating. Luckily, I was able to find someone on eBay that had some usable straight track substitutes. I ordered four initially to try them out, and then another ten when they seemed to work out okay. Next, I needed to control the switches on the monorail layout. Like many toys of the era, the switches that controlled the direction of the motor was located on the motor piece itself. This enabled the train to be controlled without chasing it down to flip a switch, and was cheap to implement since it negated the need for any kind of electronic remote control. Just turn the knob on the track direction piece and the next time the monorail comes around it will either stop or change direction. The LEGO monorail system also had switches to change to different tracks. These were operated by a slide on the side of the switch track. They even had an integrated system to switch over if the train was coming from the wrong track. Neat, right? Well, these switches are very old and tend to seize up over time. I followed a guide online and used a spray cleaner and lubricant to free them up. This worked fairly well, but it did leave a film of the lubricant on the track. Now the challenge was how to control the switches using motors. The switch tracks were first. I used an NXT motor to turn a gear rack to move the slider. After lubricating the switches, this solution worked just fine. I then added a touch sensor on each track for manual control and testing. I thought the direction switches would pose more of a challenge, but the solution ended up being very easy, using power function servo motors. They had three positions that lined up perfectly with controlling the three states of the direction switch. The only problem was that they were only released in a few sets and went for an average of over $100 online. So I took a chance and ordered some third party servos from Amazon. I know, I know, I really try to be a Lego purist, but when it's something Lego hasn't made for a very long time and used parts are too expensive, I'll give it a pass. I paid $13 each for them and ended up buying 9 of them for this and other projects. When I tried them out, they worked perfectly. I could control the power functions IR receivers from the NXT using third party sensors from Hitechnic. I just happened to have two of these and that's exactly what I needed. So I used two NXT microcontrollers, each controlling two switch track motors and sending IR signals to control their respective direction switches. I used a third party utility called NXT Screen so I could control them all from my laptop. This makes it much easier to make the necessary Bluetooth connections and start the programs running. Back to the Control Lab software. In the early 90s, this software and its accompanying serial interface were used to control projects in schools and teach students about programming and mechanical design. Again, these were sets I wanted so much as a kid, but at their price point, all I could do was drool over the catalogs. Much later in life, I found some of the serial interfaces on eBay and BrickLink, but I still needed the software. Thankfully, 
Eurobrick user Evan K had been busy uploading various LEGO Dacta software as well as user guides to archive.org. This will be linked in the description of this video along with tons of other info. This software blew my mind. Once I learned to use it, I could write my own procedures to control motors and react to sensors. And the best part, create custom control pages. I could use any combination of buttons and switches to control the 9 volt motors to do my bidding. So now the challenge was using motors from the Dacta Control Lab to control the NXTs, which would then control the monorail controls. Have I said the word control yet? In many electrical applications, relays are used to control separate systems such as the thermostat that controls an AC unit. If this tiny little switch controlled the unit directly, it would surely be overloaded and you'd have some issues on your hand. The control hub interface lacks the ability to precisely control server motors and doesn't have the power to use them properly. So I built my own relay control board. Each motor would either press or depress, unpress, release, a touch sensor sending signals to the NXT depending on which buttons were pressed in the software. Problem solved? Well, the cables that were used with the NXT were only available in predetermined, relatively short lengths. Not near long enough to reach across the layout. So I added another two NXT units to send Bluetooth commands to the remote NXTs that actually controlled the tracks. I now had the full signal chain laid out. Pressing a button on the Control App software would activate a relay on the board, which would send a signal to an NXT through the touch sensor, which would send a Bluetooth message to a remote NXT, which would either change the position of the switch track or send an IR message to the power function's receivers, which would change the directions of the trains. If this seems overly complicated, yes, it is. I could have used Arduino microcontrollers and custom software. I could have begged 40 bricks to start producing their control products again, but I wanted to keep everything as close to official LEGO as possible which I mostly stuck to. The third-party products I used were once available from LEGO, and if I had the money, I could have used them. So I created a somewhat simple layout in my living room floor. I had two sidings where each train would wait for its turn to run around the layout, two loops of track, and a crossover switch to change between loops. The trains themselves are made from the official monorail bases and motors and modified versions of the LEGO Creator high-speed train sets. Each train is powered by a rechargeable 9-volt battery. With the exception of the trains, everything is powered from a single source, my custom 12-volt AC power supply. I'm using the term power supply loosely here. It's really just a glorified distribution box and a 12-volt transformer, but it sure makes my life easier. Instead of having surge protectors and AC adapters everywhere, I have one box with the custom length cables to go to each device. Thumbs up to LEGO for using the same power requirements for many of their devices for over 15 years. The power functions and infrared receivers are powered from the train speed regulators, which requires making a custom cable. I've covered this in a previous video. As mentioned before, I have a dedicated Windows 98 machine for old software and games, but it is hardly portable. In order to run the software, I'm using a Windows 98 virtual machine on my laptop. In the Control Lab software, I laid out the buttons and switches to match the layout to make it easy to know what controlled what. In a typical run, I would start with Train 2 since it will run on the inner loop. I would make sure Track Switch 2 and Track 1 switch were in the correct position and press the button to start Train 2. I would make sure the Track 1 direction switch was reversed and once the train passed the crossover, I would switch it over to the other track. The train would cross over and then stop at the Track 2 switch. Once there, I would return the track switch to the straight position and start the train running. With Train 2 on its way, I could start Train 1 running on the outer loop using a similar procedure as before to pull the train from its siding. Making sure switch track 2 is set to straight, setting switch track 1 to curve, and setting the direction switches to allow the train to continue around the loop. It is the responsibility of the operator to make sure the track switches are set accordingly, since the auto switching feature will not work with the NXT motor attached. 
So I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this journey as much as I have, and if you did, be sure to hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and remember to play well.